entire country. So I'm trying to relate that to how it feels to be a white man who worked hard to get to the position that they're in. And they're recognizing that if they keep holding on to their seat, there isn't really a seat, you know, that power of incumbency is still very strong in politics. And so as long as I keep serving and stay for 35 years or 45 years or 50 years, there's a couple of generations that didn't get a chance to hold that seat. So it's a true dilemma. Um, I think that even within, no matter what you believe in, even in your most progressive voice, we all still have a little bit of, I'm all for this. Oh, but, but I want my son to get that job. Or, oh, but, but I don't really want to quit my job and make room for that next person. So uh, it's really challenging, but I feel like it's, we're getting closer to having the conversation. When I started in the women's movement, very often the women's movement was white and it said, come join us meaning come to our house, come to our meeting, come to our structure, come talk about what we like to talk about. And then we would be so grateful if, um, you know, Debbie Montgomery would show up and be there with us. And she was so tolerant of us. I used to just laugh, Debbie, you're so tolerant because everyone wanted so much to know you and like you and, and find out what you had in common with us. And I do think that one of the really great things, and I'm currently on the board of the Ms. Foundation for Women, and we just went through a very intensive, multiple year deep dive into ourselves. Because of course, we were a majority white organization doing all kinds of good things. Even though our leader, Gloria Steinem, would tell you that her five mentors, none of them were white. So while she moved in multiple circles, much of the women's movement stayed in sort of a white mainstream kind of place. And we did this deep dive and it was very painful. We were sitting around the table as a majority white women board saying, we want more people, but our answer was to grow the board. It wasn't to change the board. And so we, we all had to go through this personal experience and now our senior executive team is all went, are all women of color in the National Ms. Foundation. Our board has now increased its diversity population. And these are not people who some, these are people who bring incredible, you know, they, they have, have done all their work and they are very valuable members. They, they were not, they were not tokenized as I think a lot of times we might've done before. So, women are also needing to make places for women of color. And we can't always say, um, don't worry, we'll take care of you. Because mm -hmm. that's what liberal white men said to us. <laughs> it's not gonna just happen. We have to make it happen. We've gotta figure out how to integrate our own lives at the same time that we're trying to integrate our Congress and our Senator, you know, our Senate and our state legislatures and our city councils. And I, I'm very conscious of how much of an armchair advocate I'm capable of being versus how am I showing up in my life? How am I engaging in organizations where I may not be the majority person? Mm -hmm. um, and my most recent thing is I became a Nishran Buddhist, which is a organization that doesn't believe there's a Buddha, we're all our own B Buddha. And I am a minority in my Buddhist organization. And I, it is much, it is filled with African Americans and Asians and a few Hispanics and a few whites. And it's very interesting because it is teaching me about how to not be a majority feeling benevolent to the minority population. Yeah. So, and so these are the conversations I feel like we need to have in the women's movement and just keep looking for ways that we can break through personal barriers, break through our community barriers. And yes, my lovely white men who I love, 
they need to think about whether they're willing to step back uh, and make a place for somebody um, to, to fill their slot. 